Hi, I'm Mike Hamilton. I'm over here at Lithia Toyota, and actually, I'm over here at beautiful Whiskey Town Lake today, and I'm featuring a 2021 Toyota Sequoia Limited with a nightshade package. I'll be right back. back in 2007 mid-year Toyota redesigned the Toyota Sequoia one of three of Toyota's dinosaurs that still exist today and change is coming it's coming soon the Tundra is being remade and gonna be available late this fall maybe early winter at the latest um, still some supply and demand issues because of the COVID and the microprocessor shortage that's currently going on. Uh, but the uh, Tundra and, and, and the Sequoia share the same platform. It's the same chassis, the same engine, and same transmission. Uh, a few years later, 2018 or so, Toyota started doing what's called a nightshade package. That started out with the 4Runner. Today, that encompasses seven different trims that i'm aware of so we got the uh, camry the corolla the corolla hatch the uh, sequoia is one of them the tacoma is one of them the forerunner is one of them and there is a uh, grand total of seven of them that right now that i know that have a nightshade package oh they also the chr i'm not sure they're keeping that model it sounds like they are but the sun might be setting on the chr so let's start going over this. Since this is nightshade, they don't all end up being black. There's like three to four colors of a nightshade. This being a blizzard pearl paint with black accents. I've seen them and they come in black, they come in gray, or maybe even silver. I'm not 100% sure on that one either. I have to check into that. But again, you're looking at a nightshade even though it's not all blacked out, but it's got black accents and black stuff going on. So let's go ahead and start going over this. Typically, Toyota's putting his Toyota safety sensor, its radar systems behind the badge of the Toyota. That is not happening on this vehicle. I can put my fingers through here. They actually put it further down, and it has to do with its height. So it makes sure it tags the cars in front of it so it will slow down. So that's part of why it's not where it's at because of how high it sits off the ground. The radar may shoot over the top of something and not uh, do what it's supposed to do the adaptive cruise control and the smart stop. Uh, being this is a limited, you're going to see those chrome accents. And then going over to the headlights and fog lights, we do have LED uh, headlights, LED accent lights, LED high beams, and LED fog lights on it. Also, we have parking sonar as part of this vehicle. Continuing on, this is what you're going to get with nightshade. As these blacked out rims, you're going to find every nightshade that is available. We'll see black rims. And then they, those are 20 inches tied in with a Dunlop tire there. Let's go ahead and start moving across the body. And we have body side molding on here. Your mirror caps are in black here. And then up on top, we have roof rails with roof rack crossbars. And this does have a moonroof and sunroof option. When we get into the Sequoias, they do not make a Sequoia, I don't believe, that does not have a sunroof. And there is some head height clearance issues, so I imagine they're going to address that when we get into the uh, the next model year of this vehicle. And then uh, let's continue on. You see your limited and black badging there. And let's go over the window sticker here. So let me get up on that so we could read that here. So again, this is a Sequoia. There's a nightshade if anyone was questioning it. Then uh, MSRP on this vehicle is... $66,683. Uh, it has premium audio system on here, uh, auto dimming rear view, uh, rear view mirror and compass things. Home link is part of this here. Uh, power folding outside mirrors are on this here. Premium audio system. It's got a built in navigation uh, on this here. And then uh, uh, safety connect with a one year trial part of this. And we got uh, premium paint, which is the uh, Blizzard Pearl paint. And all the weather cargo liner and floor mats are all part of this this part of the uh, accessories all this stuff we see on this side is your standard equipment every one of them is going to be built the same way and then this is your 
optional equipment that makes it the package it is and and those things all right coming down below we see we got a uh, kind of a chromed out like a dark smoke chromed out body side molding and then they have uh, running boards these are plastic these aren't one of my favorite ones here uh, there is a wheel locker on these so the wheels can't be stolen very easy and let's continue on the back so you do have uh, I don't believe these are LED in the back here. So these are just still incandescent uh, tail lights and stop lights here. This is a proximity key. Um, and also this is class four tow and it tows up to 7,400 pounds. It has four and seven pin prongs. So a good size trailer or boat. This does come in at 7,100 pounds. So we could, uh, uh, you could tow something pretty reasonable and it can handle the towing on it. So, but we have a proximity key. It looks like this. It's standard. Uh, on most of the Toyotas that do proximity key and then there's a little symbol to do the lift gate So squeezing this handle makes it a manual lift gate So you like a lot of the other Toyotas that have that man that gate will uh, you could just Squeeze the handle let go and it raise up this will not just unlocks it then you have to manually raise it But squeezing this button here three seconds. It's gonna lift it up And we can take a look and lots of good stores so where these back rows are down we have a lot of cargo space in here and uh, I have them down because there's uh, all weather floor mats still in the box or all weather cargo liners are, are still in these plastics here uh, they'll be installed for the new buyer on here and I showed you how the uh, uh, these the rear is rear power so you'd be able to just uh, lift it up without having to manually lift it up and then those seats will slide forward in the middle row or somebody could come through the pass-through there in the middle for a younger uh, person to be able to do that fairly easy cup holders here and then there's little storage thing in here for your uh, rear passengers um, so simple that they also get wind window shades three rows on here so that's pretty cool so manual window shades for the babies and things like that and show you how you close this lift gate so three ways to open close it two ways to open it so or you could actually manually close it too so really a fourth way but this button here hold it for three seconds and then just step out of the way and let's go ahead and go to the uh, driver's side fuel capacity is about 27 gallons roughly it gets uh, about 450 miles rough and roughly in range it's a door that opens outside no uh, release from the inside uh, let's continue on and let's go into the uh, vehicle and also just to make uh, tell you that it also has the uh, black door handles that's part of that nightshade package also big big middle rows here plenty of space I had that back for me I'm six foot two and probably four inches or better of space in here for me and then they, you have also rear air controls uh, for the uh, middle row and then uh, your all your air vents are on top here let's kind of take, get you a look at the uh, uh, front of the vehicle nice space with our moonroof and sunroof here to bring in that extra light pretty nice uh, the, also those floor mats and also it carries a premium audio system called JBL synthesis has been around a while but it's got good sound so one of the probably still one of the better sounding systems that Toyota builds today these mirrors have turn signal indicators on here and also blind spot monitors are part of this package here Locking this vehicle, starting this vehicle, unlocking this vehicle is simple with this proximity key. All I have to do is go up to these two notches here on this handle, put my finger on this uh, notch, and it will lock the vehicle. I locked it. If I want to unlock it, all I have to do is put my hand on the door. I unlock it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior. Uh, they're going to give you quite a bit of cup holders here. We do have our... Uh, uh, leather on here. I believe this is natural leathers on here. Feels like it. Uh, we have a couple bottle holders or cup holders, some storage down there. Again, JBL synthesis. Uh, we have our memory sets for driver one and driver two on here. Uh, we have power locks in, uh, on here and uh, power windows. And then there's a little pocket here for change or something or whatever you want to keep in there. 
And then we have our power mirrors. These are power uh, folding. I will show that when we get inside. Our dome lights to on. And then we have our button for to lift up our hatch. And uh, also our all dimming high beams are on this. This is power telescopic. One of the very few Toyotas that does that. So we have a power telescopic uh, uh, steering wheel on here. Driver's seat is a 12-way uh, power here. So we got power lumbar. And then we have the little cup thing for the for your knees here and then up and down back and forth all the good stuff there uh, let's go ahead and let's get in push start of course be in proximity so push the brake push the power button it's gonna start up let's back off the uh, camera we could take a look at the steering wheel control so over here we have all our radio modes on here Push the talk that we could use for uh, the Toyota system. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are also uh, available to this unit here. And then we got our pick up and hang up on our phone. This the toggle that will uh, do this driver's information center. I will be going over that in a second. And then this is a back arrow that, for that driver's information center. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. So we have our tachometer. We have our temperature range fill uh, our, our oil, we have our fuel, our voltage meter, which you don't see in vehicles that often anymore, analog speedometer, and then there's also a digital one. So let's go over the uh, driver's information center here, which is that middle digital screen. This is archaic. Like you could get bet way better in a Corolla now for this, especially with the Toyota Safety Sense. Fuel economy 15.5 miles a gallon. That's about average. It, it rates for 13 city. Uh, 17 on the highway and this is about what it is combined so it's getting about exactly where they state um, let's continue on we have a uh, trip on here and then here's your digital miles per hour with your fill range on here this is our sway warning if you keep swaying until you take a rest and then let's go to the next screen compass coordinates I don't know why anybody has these I guess off-roading but Seems like a wasted screen there, um, and I'm sure that's going to change in, for the 2024 model year. Our radio information, Toy does that often. And then we have our lane departure alert and uh, adaptive cruise control. Now this is a really basic system. Even a Corolla has way better than this. And we do have uh, cruise control with adaptive cruise control though. So it's a two-step process on this one. We have the uh, lever underneath to set that. And then this is the radar, so this one here for three seconds of pacing. So those three bars mean three seconds, two and a half, and two seconds of pacing. Next one here is if there was a problem with the vehicle, it's just going to tell you what's wrong with the vehicle. It should open the door, should give me that information. But as far as charging problems and other problems, it will become your only screen of the vehicles having some issues. So you could get a hold of the shop and tell them, what's wrong with your vehicle and this only has that plane departure or your pre-collision um, you have uh, that so that pre-collision up to speeds of 110 miles an hour if it feels you're going to be in an accident it's going to go into a hard brake mode and slow you down by a minimum of 30 miles per hour uh, and, and also does the same thing for pedestrians when the vehicle's 50 miles an hour and under slows down by 30 miles an hour feels you're going to collide with a pedestrian or a cyclist rear cross traffic alert that's really cool it uses its sonar peaks around the corner so if you're in the shopping center pulling out blind can't see because vehicles are blocking your view the sonar is looking around the corner for you and it's going to help you get out of that parking stall without backing into somebody or hitting someone uh, and then vehicle settings is the next thing um, let's go ahead and move over to the uh, uh, infotainment screen. Let's get this camera back out. So we have our emergency flashers here. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the mirrors here. So we have our power folding mirrors. Uh, you can set that to auto so when you park you don't get your mirrors clipped. Uh, nice things like that. So that's, that's available on this one here. One of the few vehicles that does that. Uh, and then we go back over to the info change screen. Now this got bigger and a little better, but not much. Even the Tacoma and the Tundra went to an 8 inch, 8.1. This is only a 7 inch, and I don't know why they didn't go to 8 inch or bigger. Um, but maybe just because they know they're going to change it so quickly, they didn't want to spend extra money or something like that. But you do have um, integrated maps on this here with uh, satellite updates now. It does support 
Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on here. XM Radio is on a 90-day trial. After that, I pay for it 69 bucks a year or something like that for the basic plan. They always try to upsell. You just tell them no. Um, menu here will get our uh, our different information system. This is where you're going to see that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto show up in here to port through to the system. They make something called a dongle to make uh, Apple CarPlay wireless. This one is not a wireless system. The only one toy it has is wireless so far as a Supra. Hopefully they'll be doing that in more vehicles, but that Supra's uh, infotainment is based off of Toy or not Toyota technology, but BMW technology. We have an info and setting button here. Um, they do, we do have uh, our Eco. It's going to give us our fuel economy. Why well, you're going to know about Eco on a vehicle like this. It just doesn't get good film mileage. Now the new generation should do quite a bit better. Traffic and weather updates are, are available in most markets. If you live somewhere extremely rural, this may not work. So even we didn't even have this for quite a while. And I don't know when we actually got it. But I kept on demoing this in the past and it never worked. And then I just discovered this a few weeks ago that we did have it. So um, pretty cool. And you could get, a, I hear even live Doppler updates on this on the weather. So pretty cool. Then we have our three panel here this is the toyota way of being in it now we're plugged in for our apple carplane android auto this will look completely different uh, but this way you could uh, register your phone you could keep up to four quick contacts you know people you're talking to all the time and one touch to call them instead of saying hey siri or whatever or, or telling the toy system to call her just manually calling um, you won't have to do that it also supports Waze maps and google maps too uh, let's back out a little bit here. Toyota always likes the big silver knobs when we're talking about uh, Tundras and Sequoias and Forerunners. They've been doing that for forever and a day. Um, this doesn't have a physical gear shifter for shifting the four-wheel high or four-wheel low. Toyota's only vehicle left to do that will be the TRD class of the Forerunner. So this electronic shift, you can shift on the fly to something like 48 miles an hour. This does have a centered locker here so uh, no diff, rear diff locker but does have center locker to equally um, switch the power from uh, from back and front wheels uh, even a tundra doesn't have that so that's a nice feature and that's what allows this to off-road a little better because you have you could put equal power to the wheels um, tow haul mode that's self-explanatory a multi-stage heated seats now um, this is a limited i'm thinking maybe it's just the platinum it has the uh ventilated seats in it um and not the limited obviously doesn't have it because they don't have it in this here you have the primary port here for your uh, apple carplay and android auto two usb charging ports no usb c's in this yet a 12 volt power port is right here we have a couple cup holders and a bottle holder here and this is a little unique interesting spot it's like they just kind of found this spot and didn't know what to do with it and i guess you could put a cell phone and envelopes and stuff it's like looks like it's deep enough to put some mail in there or something i guess that's what you would do with that i'm not sure 100 percent. and then the gear shifter i don't like um it has the uh that little horseshoe thing there so we're going to put it in reverse and it's going to kick on our backup camera it does not have the guidelines on this again archaic you know, a lot of the cars have that uh, blue line to show you where you're at. Your uh, yellow line will should be your intended path. Uh, doesn't have that. We don't have no bird's eye cameras, no 360 cams in this here. Um, then you have all these notches back down here. This is regular drive. And this does have sequential shifting for the six gears. So I could uh, shift it individually. That's more like a tow haul type uh, setup here. I will see this vehicle should have... A 10 speed transmission going into the future huge huge center console let me back that out we have center console with uh, change and storage in here and a lot of space they do make a uh, a, a safe that uh, our gentleman's safe that fits in here so that's available also Toyota wants to make sure you're provided with lots of ample storage in this vehicle and we have a double glove box here along with that giant center console you have an upper glove box and a, and a, and a lower glove box here can't close that with that piece of paper in there just pull that out for now 
uh, in a lower glove box right here so and then something I absolutely dislike about this vehicle is no soft touch dash this is hard plastic cheap needs to be upgraded especially the money you're spending on a vehicle like this should have soft touch dashes you're getting that in a Corolla Camry all has that stuff this needs to be updated uh, our auto dimming rear view mirror with our garage door memory sets in here uh, we have uh, sunglass holders going up top these need to be LED and not incandescent uh, we have our our controls for our sunroof and moonroof I'm not going to demo that we all know how that works and then we have a special button it's called the SOS button it's like OnStar for Toyota so it does uh, emergency services if you're in an accident where airbags deploy it's going to alert the call center they'll be reaching out to you to see if you need help uh, if you don't respond they're going to have GPS coordinates of where you were at how fast you're going at the time of the accident to give emergency personnel vital information to rescue you also vice versa if you're in an emergency you can push that OS, SOS button especially when you're in an accident phone, cell phones tend to fly and that button's going to be there and, and could be there to help you also does stolen vehicle locator and as a trial and roadside assistance and you could also get some a uh, uh, little bit of information support from the call center too let's go and look at these sun visors this is the only vehicle I've seen here with Toyota it's got a double sun visor so we have right right away we have light of vanity mirrors LEDs would be nice again um, but we have a sun visor over here with the with the uh, sliding mechanism so you could get that spot that gets a shade then we have a double one here's your second one so um, you again if you're on windy mountain roads like I just came up on then you have don't have to keep switching your sun visor back and forth uh, it has two for you so really nice a little nice feature one of the last things I haven't demoed here is that we have uh, along with our parking sonar button uh, we have a rear window slider proprietary to Toyota they have this in the uh, Tundra Crew Max you also have this in the 4Runner and the Sequoia is a full rear window slider so you can almost bring the outside in when you put take, roll all your windows down and you have your sunroof open and then you have your rear window slider back here and that rolls all the way down really nice feature here and then also you got window shades that could pull up for the babies so that's a nice feature to have too for uh when you have the youngsters back there that can't uh, cover their eyes because they're too young just a just easy to drive like this this thing drives like i'm in a doesn't the body roll is not bad like i mean it, it steers super easy steering's light and you can just go up through these windy mountains here and just um just easily cruise along and in and, and with confidence i mean this thing just uh it's it just feels good I mean I don't know what to tell you other than like this is gonna be an all good all-around vehicle that could take you just about down any road and that's uh, on the pavement and off the road too I mean we have a, a co-worker had one of these and he was up at our off-road uh, park called an OHV park doing some serious off-roading with his uh, Sequoia he had, he had a SR5 um, he should have put some rock sliders on it but he didn't kind of beat up the bottom a little bit so uh, you have 27 degrees of uh, clearance in the front so I, I don't know what the breakover is but the uh, departure is 20 degrees which is reasonable and you start getting into really heavy off-roaded vehicles and you're going to see something like 30 degree uh, approaches and departure angles uh, but this could be lifted and, and you could do more things to it he had bigger wheels on his and you could get some more uh, off-road capability with the uh, uh, angles and the ground clearances and things like that but just coming around here it's just smooth I'm winding going down windy roads it's, it doesn't body roll on me it's it's tight it, I, mean, I got this camera just sitting on this tripod it's not sliding around or doing anything chattering or anything I mean it's just a just a great ride and this, this is an example just have this uh, being my camera is an iPhone 12 Pro Max that and is sitting just on a little tripod here that just gives you an example of how good a ride this is um, even coming over the uh, where they have the uh, 
reflectors in the road that are in, indented in the road because of uh, snow removal equipment here so they don't take those off when they're plowing the roads. Even if you're on top of that, it's even not that bumpy on these things. I mean, it really handles uh, bumps in, in, in this driving quite well. Going forward into the uh, new generation of this that I feel will be coming out late next year, I think this thing is going to get a little more squared up. Um, I think it's going to have kind of lines like the new 300 Land Cruiser, something you see with the Kia Telluride, but it's much bigger. That will be getting a more squared off body style, definitely better fuel economy, 10 speed transmission. The newest tech in the vehicle is supposed to be as advanced as any other stuff out there. This should be pretty impressive when it comes out. They're not cheap. These uh, um, are pretty pricey units, but you know, so are, are Tahoe's and so are Yukon's. They're not cheap either. Um, but going to the future, we're going to get better fill mileage, so that should save some money there on this vehicle. And again, these are uh, extremely good resale vehicles, one of the best, you know, with Toyota. And uh, they hold their value quite well. And I'm going to tell you, like, absolutely unbelievable reliability. This engine does not work hard. So if you want an engine that could go a million miles, this is it right here. So if you're looking, you're the one that keeps your vehicles for 20 years. Uh, this is the vehicle to get into. Just look up Million Mile Tundras. These, those things just don't, these engines just don't work hard. They work easy and they just basically last forever. These, I would say these are definitely a 20 year vehicle. And I've seen more Sequoias and Tundras like reaching that, that milestone of uh, getting that close to 20 years old. And, and when we get a lot of trades, you know, that 2002, 2004. And, and I don't expect any different from this generation start 2007 and a half. I'll probably be seeing these things till 2030, you know, from one that's that old. So uh, just such, such a great vehicle. Well, anyways, thank you for watching my video. I'm Mike Hamilton. I'll see you next time.